So what do you call yourself? Welcome. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Hey. Hey, what can I do for you this fine day? This is your destiny. Hot, hot, hot. Right now. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Kick it. Come on in and enjoy yourself. Right now. We gon' party like no one else. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Latangela Show podcast. You know, it does my heart well to have this time together where we can unplug, unwind, and just tap in. I'll have a lot of random research, some did you know news briefs, and a lot of articles that just kind of found their way across my desk. I read it and I got to tell it to someone, so I might as well tell it to you. And you never know who's going to be in the hot seat or on the tan line, but I've got questions that need answers. So be sure to chime in. If you would like to be a guest, all you have to do is hit me up at latangela.com, submit your information, and let's tell your story in your voice, your words. We're all doing our part to make headline news for all of the right reasons, right? So let's get it done. <laughs> Speaking of let's getting it done, I need your help with something. We're highlighting all of our teachers. You know, they're doing their best to go above and beyond and to pour into these babies day in and day out. Well, I've teamed up with none other than Gordon McKernan and injury attorneys with Tan Cares and Gordon Gives. And our latest initiative is the 225 Bulletin Board. Follow me, we're going somewhere. When you log on to 225bulletinboard.com, you'll have the opportunity to nominate a teacher or a support team member that's really going above and beyond. They give their all in the classroom, they're doing all of the lesson plans, they're coaching, they're mentoring, they're doing the most. Well, that's what we're looking for. Log on to 225bulletinboard.com, nominate them, and we'll select two winners each month. Now, with these two winners, they'll receive $250 each, just as a token of our appreciation, and some space on our billboards just to say, we see you, we appreciate you, and we cannot do this without you. So make sure that you log on and help us get it done. Today in the hot seat, I'm super excited to get this lady. She is busy. She is all over the world, and she is inviting us to a platform that's going to help us pay it forward. All of my forward thinkers, all of those who are just innovative, and you have that business idea, maybe even that business plan, and it's in full stride, but you need a little support. Okay. Well, instead of saying bye, Felicia, we're going to say hello, Felicia, Felicia Hatcher. Now, when I tell you that she's busy, keep in mind that she is the CEO of Black Ambition. Now, BlackAmbitionPrize.com, once you log on, you'll see that their founder, none other than the Pharrell Williams. This guy has been on the entertainment scene for over two decades, making some of the best of the best when it comes to those bangers to get us rocking. He is a songwriter, an artist, a fashion guru, an entrepreneur in his own right. And he's paying it forward by saying, look, I want to help you get your ideas off the ground, literally. So we're going to talk about that and you don't want to miss it. They are having open applications right now. And I'm like, you better log on to blackambitionprize.com right now. For some of the did you know news briefs, are you a dreamer? Do you often have dreams when you sleep? I don't really dream. And when I do, it's not really in color, but it's vivid enough, right? Well, I'm going to help you out today. Let's just say that you're a dreamer. And when it comes to interpreting those dreams, <laughs> you're not quite sure how to figure it out. Well, if you're thinking that you're falling, according to random research in WebMD, because if WebMD gives us the information, surely it's got to be legit. It says that you're dreaming and you're feeling a lack of security, a loss of control. You're feeling threatened. Now, if you're dreaming of being chased, well, that means you're running away from your fears. If you dream of your teeth falling out, they say that's a case of anxiety, concerns about self-image, inability to get a grip on something. Okay. And if you dream of being naked in public, it means you're feeling vulnerable, anxious about something, and maybe, maybe you just, you know, 
<laughs> have ambitions of being a streaker. I don't know. <laughs> I read it and I had to tell it to someone. Now we all have heard of karma. Hopefully karma is good karma because what you put out, you're going to get back and you're putting out a lot of good stuff, right? Well, almost nine in 10 Americans believe that karma is real. I'm a part of that. That's according to a survey which revealed that 84% buy into the idea that what goes around comes around. The average American engages in at least five generous acts per week because they want to pay it forward and they want some of the good karma to swing the block right on them. Okay, so today I'm going to encourage you to pay it forward. And whether it's opening the door for someone, and don't forget to say thank you, <laughs> or paying for a cup of coffee for someone that's in line behind you, just think of small ways that you can pay it forward. It does take a village when it comes to raising a child. And, you know, we have so many people that's out and about making it happen. But there's some research that has gone into this. According to Light Bright Academy, when it comes to raising a child, it really does take a village. The average working parent with a child under the age of 10 actually relies on six different people to support their child's growth. Now, that comes from family members, such as their child's grandparents, extended family like their aunts and uncles and cousins and siblings are also included as well as their teachers and neighbors being a part of the village. I like that. Keep in mind today that you are a part of someone's village. So what you do today really matters tomorrow. So hopefully you're planting good seeds. <laughs> when it comes down to good food, mm, dear Louisiana, we will add the spice to the world. But the taste of tang is being brought to you today by the powerful punch of an avocado. I don't think we can talk about the goodness of this enough, but I did some random research according to the International Journal of Psychology where they said, I don't know if you could tell if it's ripe or not ripe enough in the moment, but you need to stay focused and the avocado can help you do that. <laughs> according to a recent study, studies have shown that people who ate an avocado each day, they were better at avoiding distractions. Are you easily distracted? It's because you haven't had your avocado. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to try that today. How do you make a good recipe with avocado? I've been struggling with that. I know that you're supposed to add some lime and some lemon juice. Make a good guacamole. Anybody? Send me some suggestions at that. Latangela.com. I'm here for the recipe, especially if it's going to help me not get distracted. <laughs> oh, no. Mm, okay. Taste the tinge since we're here. How do you like your steak? These are the questions they really need answers. How do you like your steak prepared? Medium, it comes close second. Medium rare tops a new survey that has asked about 3,000 people how they like their steak prepared. Now, the next favorite came in medium well, well done, followed by rare. Mm. Just make sure it's seasoned right. That's all I ask of thee. That's about it. <laughs> Coming up, I got some information that you can definitely use. I really want to get into it. We have none other than Felicia Hatcher. Be sure to log on, get all of the details. I'm looking forward to seeing all of your innovative ideas and taking it next level. Thank you so much. If you hadn't subscribed yet, now is the time. The Latangela Show podcast iTunes, Spotify, WAFB Plus, and Latangela.com. Hi, Felicia. Hi. <laughs> How oh, are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm holding on. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Listen, when I tell you that this week has kicked off with a blast, I don't think I was ready for it, but it came through with all cylinders clicking. So ready <laughs> or not, here we are. I, I'm in the same boat, so I understand completely. No, I appreciate you so much for taking time out of your schedule. I know that you're busy. You got a zillion and one things going on. You're traveling all over the world. And as a matter of fact, you'll be here with me soon um, for Brew, Baton Rouge Entrepreneurship Week. Yeah. So it's a field trip in the making. Yeah, um, looking forward to it. Tell a little bit about your position as CEO of Black Ambition Prize. Yeah, I run Black Ambition, and so we are an organization that fun finds, funds, and fuels amazing and diverse uh, Black, Hispanic, and HBCU entrepreneurs, and the organization was founded by Pharrell Williams four, four years ago to do exactly that, um, and really kind of be like a rocket ship 
uh, you know, he's very big about space and creativity and, and dreaming and being able to be a rocket ship for, for entrepreneurs to get them everything that they need. And, you know, it's almost like we got to put a handle on that. When you say for real Williams, I mean, that is such a heavy weight. You know what I mean? For over two decades, this man has given us so much entertainment. He is so right. innovative. And now seeing him taking it full circle and giving it back, inviting others to be as creative and rewarding that. It's amazing to see that people with such large platforms, they'll link with moguls such as yourself to say, let's find the next, the next leaders, the next um, inventors, the, the brightest of the bright, if you will. Yeah, yeah. I, I have that conversation with him all the time. I'm like, you can be doing so many other things, right? And you've done <laughs> so many things from music to culture to film to fashion. Fashion, yeah. Right, and, and a million other things in, in between that. And so I'm always like, why why this and, and why now? And so much of our conversation is about legacy, right? And so not just like his legacy as a black man with a black family and building upon that, like, what does it look like when you have something, right? And you're in a position and you don't do for other people to help them build their legacies as well. And so when we talk about Black ambition, it's so much about that, of like this ripple effect and like like all the ripples that come out of that initial pebble that's thrown into the ocean. And that's what Black ambition has represented. A 101 entrepreneurs that we've invested in since wow. we've started. Uh, they have gone on to raise over $95 million. That is so great. Businesses. And so it's a testament to when we find these entrepreneurs, they, they they exist all around, right? Like like abundance exists all around. And, you know, as human beings, we don't create abundance. It exists. What we do is we create the limitations that stop us from seeing and experiencing the abundance. And I think when we talk about all the interruptions that stand in the way from our people being able to get the things that they need. Um, our, our work is around building uninterrupted pathways to entrepreneurship and through entrepreneurship. I love that. You know, we're really big on representation. It, it matters. Seeing those who look like us investing back in us, saying that we don't have to look for the excuses. We're eliminating those one idea at a time. And whatever those barriers look like, you have people that are paying it forward. Um, just going through the website, as people are giving their applications, they can scroll through and see all of those that have become community stakeholders. You're building a community of people that's saying, hey, we see you, we are here with you. Um, over the past several years, have you found one that's really just grabbed you and was like, hey, you know what? I didn't even see this one coming. They took it so far left, like, wow. Oh man, that's like that's like picking your favorite child, right? Hey, well, <laughs> sometimes you got to do it. Now, sometimes <laughs> like, I have 101 <laughs> babies, including the two that I literally birthed, right? And so <laughs> uh, we're excluding the two that I that I actually birthed. You know, our our million dollar prize winners, and we have three now, are the ones wow. that uh, they're always going to immediately stand out because they are the ones that stood out to get to that point, but. Yeah. All of the companies have impressed me in so many different ways and not just with their ideas, but their resiliency, uh, how they're solving problems, how they're navigating, how they're building teams, how they're building families. Like I, I'm overjoyed to, to see and get their progress and their updates all the time. But I would say, you know, when I look at Logistics, which was our first prize winner, uh, to Andre and, and, and Justin, two, two guys out of Detroit, uh -huh. third generation in the construction space. And they just said, there gotta be a different way. And they took like their technology background with their family legacy of being in construction for three generations and built an amazing technology platform that they've gone on to raise over $7 million um, in addition to the million dollars that we funded their business, but this transformational with the software that they created. And then I look at Pound Cake, which was our prize winner in 2022. And um, you know that that couple, Camille and Johnny, they just rolled out into 800 Ulta locations and they have this patented red lipstick that looks the same color on anybody, no matter what your skin tone is. And that's a problem really? that women mostly understand, right? Like you, yeah, you look, look at it, it in the back. catch us on the back end. I totally understood where you were going yeah. with this. <laughs> But they were listed, uh, they were they were named as one of the Time 100 Top Inventions of the Year wow. in 2022, right? Um, and then this past year, 2023, our current prize winner, uh, Antoinette, Antoinette Banks, is uh, she founded a company called Expert IEP. And so for those families whose, whose kids are 
um, you know, have have different kind of learning styles, right? Where they have been assigned an individual education plan by the schools that they're in. Well, it's very hard for parents to be able to navigate that, uh, to make sure that their child is progressing, that they're able to communicate, that the individualized learning plan is actually the right thing for them. And she started that because her daughter um, had autism and was given a very, very limited prognosis on life. And her daughter just graduated, I think she either graduated high school, graduated college this year. And so she built the solution that she needed when her daughter was just starting school. And I think for every company that we've invested in that has had a problem, did not have a solution in the moment, and built the built the solution to make it easier for other people. That's that's why it's hard for me to pick one. Yeah, think, yeah, it's impossible to pick one yeah. at this point. Because if you ask me to pick one, I'm like, oh, that's tough. That's real hard, Felicia. That's <laughs> hard. You know, I don't even know how you narrow it down for them to get to the final selection. So walk me through this yeah. application process, right? Who does who does it look like? Um, how soon is too soon to say I have this idea or I have this product? When do I end up on the doorstep? Yeah, and so we get close to 2,000 applications a year. Um, and I sometimes I hate saying that. And I love saying it, but I also hate because I don't want people to be like, man, I'll, I'll never be able to stand out. Yes, you will. Absolutely. And it's, it's also a very competitive process. And so I like to tell people, you're literally entering a, a competition that Pharrell created and, and you're competing with the best of the best in the world. That says something about like your idea and your company. And so um, some some quick tips around this, right? And so you apply to the to the prize before the, before the deadline. Uh, there's five categories that we look for companies. And so tech, healthcare, consumer goods and services, media and entertainment, and then AI is a new vertical for us us this year. Uh, you apply, right? So you got to submit a video, tell us about your company, what traction that you have, if you've raised any money, if you're uh, if you have revenue, you don't necessarily have to, you can be pre-revenue in order to apply, but you do have to show us some level of traction, right? There's right. a customer base, there is a wait list, there is a, w- a way that you've created an MVP, right? A minimal viable product to test the likelihood that this may succeed or be able to generate customers or, or revenue. We got to be able to see something like that. And so uh, if it's just an idea, it's a little too early, right? You got to okay. show us level of, lo- level of traction. And then we we are looking for teams because we know that this process um, is a process that we've put together that's going to stretch you as an entrepreneur, right? And so the questions in the application within itself are going to make you stronger as an applica- as an entrepreneur, and it's done by design. And so I from love how the- you just said that. You just broke it down to the application is about to just filter out a lot. Are you ready? Go to the application and let's see. <laughs> because sometimes when we're running our businesses, we're not, sometimes we don't um, call it synthesize the information, right? Like we understand it. We yeah. know what we're building. We know what we're selling. But sometimes we struggle with communicating it in a very concise way so that people understand it. And then we get discouraged. Like no one is interested in investing or buying. Like, no, there might be some communication things that you need to do. And sometimes we just don't ask ourselves the right questions until you get into a process like this. And so hopefully it's asking you questions that you can answer, right, in a mm-hmm. succinct point of time that move you on into the to, to the next level and so then we take those 2000 ish applications we have about 200 application reviewers and then that takes us down to 250 semi-finalists Ooh. and we take those 250 semi-finalists through a three-month cohort style mentorship program that is probably the best three months that you're going to spend uh, with a community of other entrepreneurs, with a dedicated mentor, with a ton of resources, and so many of our corporate partners pour into our entrepreneurs. So from Adidas to LVMH, our, our partners, Heineken is a partner, Comcast, NBC Universal, and they're all pouring visa, they're all pouring resources into those entrepreneurs for three months. And then that also serves as a way for our team to then be evaluating who shows up to all their sessions? Are they contributing back into the community or are they being scarcity mindset and holding on to the resources and the gems and not sharing it? We're looking at all of those because that will tell us if you'll be a good black ambition entrepreneur. Uh, and then from and there- And that's a win in itself. Just to be a part of the cohort, you're walking away with things that you will not be able to get anywhere else. 
Yeah, nowhere. I mean, so many of quite a few of our entrepreneurs, like their mentors became their investors. Right. And mm-hmm. our first year million dollar prize winner always, he always jokes. So like, dude, I'm going to come knock on your door and take this check. But he's like, he would have paid to be like in the mentorship program because yeah. it far outweighed the million dollars that, that he, that he received in value. Right. And his mentor actually also invested in his company. He met that mentor through the mentorship program. Uh, and then in November, we have a really big, big party and Pharrell comes on stage and pre- presents, you know, over $3 million in checks. So about 35 entrepreneurs. And so that is the process, right? Yeah. So that people understand. And I always tell people, you know, if you apply, you don't make it to the next step, apply the following year. Uh, my mentor said, has always said to me, Felicia, all work works, right? <laughs> if it doesn't work for you in that moment, it works on you in that moment. And when you double back into either our program or someone else's program, you are a different type of entrepreneur because you went through that through, went through that process. And so I'll, I'll stop there because I know I've been going through the process. Oh, no, that is awesome information. And you're breeding greatness. Just knowing that when they sign up, they're going through the application. When you said it's lost somewhere in here in translation, we understand it. We're head down just doing the work, doing the work. But it's hard for you to build a team because you're not used to one having a team. And a lot of us, especially us in our community, we are afraid to share our ideas because it's so much of a competition versus us doing things to complement one another and to see how we could push the initiatives forward together. So to see that you all are building a platform and bridging those type of gaps and saying, you know what, let's bring in the entrepreneurs and the mentors, but we're paying attention to see if you can indeed pay it forward. It doesn't just stop with you. What are you doing to make the world we live in a better place? Um, You're looking for teams. That's big because teamwork, look, it might get a little heavy. We might need somebody doing the thinking, somebody doing the working in different days, different roles. So now that we're looking for the teams, is there a certain age range? Is there a certain region that you're looking for throughout the years? What does that look like? The region? No, we're, we're looking for entrepreneurs all across the United States. We actually just are in the process of launching another international prize, but that this one we're talking about in particular is for the U.S. Uh-huh. And then 18 and up um, for this in, this national prize that we have. And so there's no age limit on the other side, right? Uh-huh. And when we're talking about team, we're pretty liberal about what we mean by team. And so like a core person, it could be a contractor that's assisting you, right? But you need to be thinking about how am I, if I'm not an employer yet, that I will become an employer because that's also how you have massive impact into our communities. And what we've seen studies have shown, if you wanna increase the the number of people that have jobs, you gotta first increase the number of entrepreneurs that look like them. Because we are like the more than likely to give people that look like us their very first jobs and opportunities. And so you get to increase both, but we also want people to be able to kind of share the load, right? Because most people are still running their business while they're going through this program. And so you need to have someone in your corner that is rooting you on in those moments where life has punched you in the gut or the process of the program has felt like too much and is swallowing you whole. You've got to lean on somebody. Absolutely. Like most of us are only here because of a praying grandparent or like somebody yeah. in our Right. And so, and I know that just being an entrepreneur, being the daughter of an entrepreneur, being the granddaughter of a sugarcane farmer, like I know what that process is like firsthand. Um, And that's why we're making the process as easy as possible, um, but then also stretching and strengthening you as an entrepreneur so that you can be a very good steward of Pharrell's resources once you become a prize winner. That's good stuff. And saying that all of this work is coming across your desk day in and day out, um, what are some of the things that you do to unplug, unwind, tap in and stay focused? You know, like I I have a lot of questions that need answers because I'm not myself until I've had my tea. If I don't sip on my tea, I can't talk to anybody. Now is not the time, Felicia. It it really would be a bye Felicia moment. So (laughs) I have to have my tea. You know, I'm making it a point to get my steps in just to clear my mind. And then I feel as if I can tap in. But how do you keep your level of creativity, that sanity with 2,000 applications coming your way and for real over your shoulder saying what we got? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Uh, Latentially, you said a a lot of the same things, right? And so uh, I'm just going to pray her for sure. Um, I'm a, I'm a coffee drinker and a tea drinker. So it's one or the other. Sometimes I rotate <laughs> when things get really heavy. I'm a Pisces. So I love to be by the water. It just gives okay. me a sense of clarity and, and calm. 
And then knowing that I am working on something much bigger than myself gets me up in the morning in those moments where I'm just like, man, I'm tired. Or uh, why am I doing this again? Like this feels too heavy and too big, the responsibility, because we have we've made a lot of strides, but there's so much more to go, right? And sometimes when you get up every day and you can't see on the other side of what this looks like or the results on the other side, but you know, you got to get up every single day. Those things have really kind of helped me and grounded me. And then being around really, really, really good people and and friends have been some of the things. And then I like to travel and I'm a foodie, right? And so- uh, Okay, okay. Those, those good, are, those good are thing are Louisiana things. is on your list because it's a field Listen. trip. And honey, when I tell you we breaking out the good stuff, we rolling hey. out the red carpet for you. And it's crawfish season. Do you like seafood? I love seafood. Love Got seafood. Got you, sis. Say less. <laughs> <laughs> How do we um, register right now? How do we find out more information? How do we become a donor, a sponsor, a mentee, or a mentor? All of the above. Yeah, we're looking for mentors right now. We're also looking for really amazing application reviewers. Um, so I always like to throw that th- throw that out there. And all that information can be found on blackambitionprize.com. The website again is blackambitionprize.com. There it is. And I want you to think of this as an extension of your office. So whenever you have things going on, just jump in a hot seat on the tan line, consider it a family reunion, and it's done. You ever yeah. need me, I'm here for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being a vessel and a steward for, for this because- I think so many people have platforms and they use their platforms for what they need to. But when it's important about getting information to create like lifelong changing opportunities to people, I truly appreciate this moment from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. That means more than, you know, you know, it's just like um, God, he is loaning us. He's lending these platforms. And at mm-hmm. the end of the day, he's going to ask us, were you responsible with whatever platform it is that I gave you? What did you do with what I gave you while you had it? You know, and I want to be able to answer that with an empty heart saying I gave it all while I was there. Yeah. So I, I appreciate it. you so much for that. And I know you got more work to do. So I'm going to let you chase the sun or let the sun chase you. But either way, get after it. I love Thanks. you. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Awesome. Love you, Bye. Bye. Thank you so much.